the n number lets you control how many photons will be averaged together in a photon map. So let's take a look. We're going to turn to photon estimate pre-computed so we can see the cells. So this is how it looks like with the 1000 number of photons that are averaged together. So if I decrease this to for example 10, you will see we get much more splotchy solution. Okay, so you can see here this looks much more splotchy. So we want to keep this setting high enough so your photon map looks quite smooth. It doesn't need to look completely smoothed out and as a general rule this should be kept at uh, about 1000 times smaller than your global photon number. So if you have 500,000 here you can put 500 here and it should be a good starting point. Okay, now if you put the n number too high, for example 5000, you will see that too much photons are averaged together and you're starting to lose the definition in shadows. So everything just comes very blurry and the light may start leaking in the corners. So like this example you can see we totally lost the definition of light and shadow in this area here so light just floods below these objects and just leaks everywhere so you should decrease this to some lower number that doesn't produce any light leaks and like I said it can still look a little bit splotchy like we had before because when we do our photon mapping this will clear out the splotchiness The pre-cache distance is another setting that lets you directly control the size or the number of the cells in a scene. So let's take a look. We're going to turn back to Photon Estimate, pre-compute it so we can see the cells. So right now we are getting 33,000 cells. And now if I for example decrease this to 60% you will see that the cells get much smaller and you get more cells in the scene. So you can see now we're getting 147,000 cells and so this is much much more than before. As you can see before and after. So I usually leave this at 100% and adjust the GI resolution with the number on the top but if you need to tweak it for some reason you can always use pre-catch distance and reduce or increase the size of your cells. The pre-catch blur setting is another setting that lets you smooth out the pre photon map solution. Uh, so for example if I increase this to 100% the Photon map will look much smoother. So you can see we're getting less splotchiness. But uh, I usually leave this at a zero because increasing blur may cause light leaks and you would want to avoid that. So unless you have so, some splotchiness that you can't get rid of in any other way, you can use this pre cache blur but don't go too high with these settings because you will get light leaks. The settings on this side of the panel should never really be changed because they always work best with default settings. And these settings just control the size of the filter in the scene. So for example, where you have a higher density of the photons, in one part of the scene and a lower density of photons in another, uh, Curry will automatically adjust the filter size based on this density of photons. So you just leave this one at default values and don't uh, really change them. So at the bottom of the panel we have a photon settings for the caustics and this work in pretty much the same way 
as the settings for the photons. They're just one additional setting for add to light map. Um, but we will talk more about Kotics in one of the later tutorials. So uh, hopefully you have enjoyed this tutorial and in the next tutorial we're going to take a look at the final gathering tab.